This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Yes, 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 indeed. Thanks so much for listening. I'm your host, John Solberg, and I'm your host of the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. I just had a momentary lapse. And I got to let you know that today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop, purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non crossbred Wilara 9 Plus briskets. And as always, they are handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they're shipping out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use The Butcher Shop win and win often. If you're not a competitor, but you still have an eye for the finer cuts, great news. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged, Australian Wagyu, and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me, who aspire to be the kings and queens of the cul-de-sac. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock, and again, always hand-picked just for you. You might be saying, John, all that sounds great, but I want to try something exotic. Rest easy knowing the butcher shop can get you your next elk steak or your, or your next camel roast, and they're going to ship it out promptly. Yes, they can get camel. Let's review the best competition briskets. Check. The best pork selection. Check. Giving you a better overall option to cook at home. Check. So give the butcher shop a call. 850-458-8782. 850-458-8782. Mention the Barbecue Central Show, and they're going to give you 10% off your entire order each and every time. You can also interact with them on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Butcher Shop. Shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E, The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wilara 9 Plus briskets. And here's what's going on today. We're going to take a jump back to 2017. Greg's going to catch up with Pitmaster of Slaughterhouse 5. All right, closing the show tonight is a barbecue legend. He'll be enshrined to the Barbecue Hall of Fame this year, along with Melissa Cookston and famous Dave Anderson. Here to talk about that, as well as some other barbecue topics, is the pit master of Slaughterhouse 5, the owner of Joe's KC. In the Kansas City Barbecue Store, let's head to the Smithfield Hotline and welcome first-timer to the show, Jeff Staney, joining me here. Jeff, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Absolutely fabulous, Jeff. Appreciate you making time for the show this evening. So, you know, I guess right up front, I know there's like zero chance of us covering the whole barbecue landscape that you've uh, been able to cover during your time in it so far. But let's go ahead and start, I guess, with the most recent announcement first. Uh, that, of course, that you're going to be inducted into the Barbecue Hall of Fame a little later this summer. Jeff, when you look back at how this whole thing kicked off for you back like in that 1990 range, did you ever fathom that one day you would be able to look ahead and realize you're going to be garnering such an honor? No, ab- absolutely not, Greg. You know, this this was a hobby that I that I fell in love with. I've always loved cooking. I fell in love with barbecue. I fell in love with the the hobby and or sport of competition barbecue. And, you know, it led into the business. And I think my, one of my goals, I've told a lot of people, is when I got into the barbecue business, I just didn't want to do another resume. So um, I wanted barbecue to be my career. And I've been very, very blessed. I've had great people along the way. You know, I've had a competition career, a, a, a restaurant career, a, a, a barbecue, you know, goods and services career. I'm in the sauce and rub business. And, you know, I just, I live and breathe barbecue. So I guess I've just been there picking up different, different little things that I've kind of stumbled across over the years. Jeff, if we look back, do you recall specifically what drew your attention in the competition barbecue in the first place? I think it was the word competition. I think that I'm a very competitive person. I love to play golf. I was active in sports as a kid. I think I would have done, if, they, if there were cake baking competitions, and there are now, but back then there weren't, it would have been any, anything that involved food and competition. At the end of the day, uh, there was a winner. And in the, in the middle of all that, there was there was associating with uh, you know camaraderie and associating with like minded people. I'd have done it. Bar- barbecue was just the it was the vehicle at the time that grabbed me. I could have been almost anything. Now I'm really glad it was barbecue because I don't really want to decorate cakes. <laughs> Jeff, were you uh, as growing up? Was your household one where everybody was cooking? Did you have like a mom or a grandma or, or a dad that would like pull you into the kitchen or out in the backyard? Did you come up kind of in that live fire environment? 
you know what, you know, I really didn't. My family actually was very, very, maybe bad cooks. I mean, my mother admittedly, and we joke about this a lot, was not a very good cook. She didn't cook. Um, I learned how to make French toast. I learned how to, out of a peanuts cookbook, actually. Um, I learned how to make chef priority pizzas and, and craft macaroni and cheese. And my dad traveled a lot. So I really made a lot of my own food. It was, it, it's, it's odd. I didn't have grandparents close by. So there was no real mentoring or growing up around a kitchen. It's something that I felt comfortable doing. Um, and love doing it from from a very very young age. Uh, you know, from a from a parent's perspective, were were they excited to see kind of your path as you were getting older and seeing you getting into more in this culinary type of a situation? Both both my parents have been very active. We've we've lived close by. We've lived far apart. My dad has followed my barbecue. In fact, one of the very first contests I was ever at a Lenexa barbecue cook off. In 1991, my dad came in about two in the morning. I think he'd been traveling all week, and he came out there and hung out with us. So they've they've been very excited about it. The one aspect I will tell you that I don't think they were as excited about when I sat them down and told them I was quitting my real job <laughs> to go into the barbecue business. They were very supportive, but my my neither neither my parents would be very good poker players. And I believe that I could see, especially in my father, I could see that he was a little bit scared that I was making a maybe an unwise decision. But um, he now he now is a big supporter. He'll be we're going to be cooking this weekend in Lee Summit, Missouri. My dad told me just yesterday he's going to come out and come out and spend some time with us. Jeff Staney joining me here on the show. Uh, Jeff, you, you just mentioned you're still competing present day, but you know a different time back when you were really kind of pumping, taking big wins, American Royal, so on. What was competition barbecue like back then as you're kind of comparing it now present day? You know, Greg, there's 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 a handful of similarities. Obviously, we're still cooking food. There's obviously still fantastic camaraderie. There's obviously still there always was and still is a lot of great, you know, people in this thing. I've made a lot of good friends, a lot of lifelong friends. Um, you know, I've been doing it long enough. I've actually lost some friends. There's some people that were a lot older than me that were cooking that are no longer with us. Mm. So those things, those things are the same no matter what. The style in which we cook, we now cook. We, you know, we everybody. I think the latest anyone would ever have dared put a brisket on 25 years ago was maybe at 10 o'clock or midnight if that guy was cooking really, really fast. We were we were 4 a.m. Excuse me, we were, we were 4 p.m. barbecue. You know, we we pretty much put our brisket on at four, wow. and it came off between 11 and 12. So we really had you know um, clo- close to uh, you know a tw- an 18 and a half to 20 hour brisket. The speed of barbecue sped up. I think, and I, and I think there's a reason for that. I think one of the reasons is it's it's expensive and time consuming and, and draining to do that um, to, to to cook all night. And I think that there's more. I would call them professional barbecue competitors. They may have other jobs, but they are doing this. It is it is a it is a lifestyle. It's a hobby, but it's a it's a minor league profession for them. So, and there's obviously people doing it full time. And I think those people who go out there and you know the most cookoffs we ever did, 1993, we won KCBS Team of the Year. We yep. probably cooked 23 cookoffs. Um, that wouldn't get you anywhere now. In fact, I'm going to probably do 22 cookoffs this year. So, so when you're doing 30, 35, 40 cookoffs, I think you've got to turn it to business and, and efficiency becomes very important. So people learned how to cook fast because I think it gives them a better lifestyle. They don't have to stay up all night. They can, they can go home if they want to, or they can bring their kids and they can sit and watch TV or they can get a good night's sleep and get up and, and do the cookoff. So the speed is, I think, probably the biggest change, the speed with which we cook. Um, and then I think the other thing that's really different is is everything has become quite a bit sweeter. I think that I think that sweet and and a fast cook are the two things that I would say are the most different about competition barbecue than it was twenty twenty five years ago. Do you think that with the increase in speed and uh, more of an adaptable lifestyle, uh, at least how they're doing it today, is there anything that is being lost? Uh, do you, Do you feel like there's something that you had that you don't have doing it this way or not so much. Want to find out what Jeff had to say about the old way, the new way? That's a guy that knows. Team of the year in 1993? Before any of this was heard of? Head on over to the bbqcentralshow.com. There's a link in today's show notes to take you to this complete episode. Go check that out and then let me know what you think. Drop me an email, John, J-O-N, John, at the BBQ Central Show.com. I would love to hear from you, good, bad, or indifferent. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I am your host, John Solberg. 
Make sure that you get yourself outside and cook something.